Two years ago, when I was in Sarah Street Masjid, there was a person, his name was Buddha Uzman Matthews. His nephew is here in this Masjid. What's, what's his name? Faisal. Faisal. Faisal Matthews. <coughs> so I met him after Maghrib and we took our shoes. And that same night, Isha, it was announced that the Uthman met this Hamalin of England in the world. So that's a reminder of us. And he was in his mid 50s. So, so we, we really need to make our salah, each and every salah, as if it is our last salah. The second reminder um, it's just now since two weeks ago that I, as an Imam, or whenever I need a salah, I make kunud in every salah. Because that was a request from a Palestinian brother that was here in Cape Town for our conference. He said the least that we can do is, there's so much that we must still do for Gaza, but the least that we can do, seeing that the, 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 the advice is there to make du'a'u nazila, a kunud nazila, in each and every salah, whenever, when the ummah is in difficulty. And I think as long as we live, there can't be a greater difficulty of what the Ummah is going through in Gaza and in Palestine. Uh, in the week, I, or two days ago, I received a video from um, a gathering in Mauritania. And Mauritania is not a rich country, but they are one of the few countries or Arab countries that are doing their utmost to see to the needs of the people in Gaza. So this Alim said, he said, if, if the Sahaba had to look at this time, their whole focus, nothing else, their whole focus would have just been Gaza and Palestine. So the reason I'm saying that is, that is supposed to be us. Imagine our own brothers and sisters on a daily basis, on a minute basis, are being massacred and butchered and the world is silent. And the U your UN, the United Nations supposed to be, but it's actually united nothing. When it comes to Muslims and Palestinians, it's, they are doing nothing. They are hopeless. And maybe it's good that they are hopeless so that we can do something. And the reason why I'm motivating wherever I go uh, about each one of us doing something is because first of all, in 20 years time, when your grandchildren is going to see what happened in, the, in, in Gaza, they're going to look at grandfather, grandfather or father. Did, why did you stop this genocide? Did you do, did, grandfather, did you do anything to stop this genocide? And besides, our children, grandchildren are going to ask us, Allah is going to ask us the day of Qiyamah, you lived at the time when this happened. What did you do? So may Allah grant us that we use our aql, our intellect. You know, I'm just going to give a simple example. There's a simple brother here in Cape Town. He's not a rich man. He works for, for Osmonds here. In the, you know, he's a local worker. But when the first time when he saw at 2 o'clock in the morning, he said to me, Sheikh, I, I don't look at videos, I don't look at TikTok. But this morning I opened the videos and when I saw what happened, I cried like a baby. And he said, I, I went to my work, I spoke to all my colleagues, Muslims and non-Muslims. I asked them, each one of you to give 25 rand every week. He managed 25 people of his colleagues are still giving you know, 25 rand every week. Besides that, because of his commitment, somebody phoned him and said, Sadiq, come fetch a parcel. This was not a parcel, it was a parcel of 500,000 rand because of his commitment. Inshallah. So we need to be committed because Allah is going to question us at the day of And I'm ending off to say again what this Sheikh from Mauritania said. If the Sahaba had to live at this time, they wouldn't have worried and focused on anything else but what's happening in Gaza with our own brothers and sisters and children. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَنِينَ وَتُبَ عَلَيْنَا وَفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَسِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ